from Sosdiasto. Um, okay, we will uh, present it, uh, our student project. The title is The Role of Extracellular Metrics uh, in Cancer Cell Behavior. And here's uh, our member, the member of SGDB. Uh, chapter one will, uh, will be presented uh, by my college. Uh, my name is Erika Lesariwati with three digit name, with three less digit name 089. Okay, so the um, extracellular matrix is often defined as a complex mixture of structure, structural proteins, glycoproteins, and proteoglycans. Uh, and the function of ECM uh, are providing essential physical scaffolds to maintain tissue structure and produce various biochemical support for its cellular constituents. And the other function is to maintain the hydration and pH of the local microenvironment and regulates the, avail the availability of growth factors. In invasive cancer cells, ECM proteins like laminin 5, hyaluronan, and the NC are strongly refilled. Prolyl 4 hydroxylase, lysyl hydroxylase, lysyl oxidase, and molecular caparone hit shock protein 47, which are collagen modification enzymes, are highly shown in cancer cells. Okay, my name is Indiaron Anantaseno with the last three digit of name 091. So the formulation of this student project is the first one we have, what is the general definition structure and component of the extracellular matrix as an important biochemical part of the cell? And then the second one we have, how do cancer cells develop from causes, symptoms, to stages of cancer? The third one, what is the role of the extracellular matrix in cancer cell behavior? We also have three objectives, which are understanding the general definition, structure, and component of the extracellular matrix as an important biochemical part of cell, understanding ways for the cancer cells to develop from causes, symptoms, to stages of cancer, and understanding the role of the extracellular matrix in cancer cell behavior. And then there are some benefits of the student projects, which are show show the relationship between the extracellular matrix and the cancer cell, provide information about the development of cancer cells from causes, symptoms to stages of cancer, and it can improve the knowledge of medical students about the extra, extracellular cell and cancer cell. My name is Sibustego Maditya Dharma, with three last digit of name is 087. I will explain about the general structure and characteristic of HM. First is the definition. Extracellular matrix, known as HM, Defined as a non-cellular three-dimensional structure, it regulates almost all of the cellular function. It is secreted locally and surround or lie beneath the cells. Second is the structure. There is two main structure of HM. There is basal membrane and interstitial matrix. Basal membrane, highly organized interstitial matrix around epithelial cells, endothelial cells, and smooth muscle cells. Synthesis both by mesenchyme and epithelium, has porous structure like a mass, and the major component is collagen type 4, laminin 2 and taptin or nidogen 2 isoform, and sulfated proteoglycan. The second is interstitial matrix. It is present in the space between cells in connective tissue, between parenchymal epithelium and underlying vascular and smooth muscle structure. It is synthesized by mesenchymal cells and form 3D amorphous gel structure. The major component is fibrial and non fibrillar collagens, fibronectin, proteoglycan, elastin, and hyaluronate. Then there is function of HM. General function of HM is first build and maintain cell structure form and mechanic support, separate and regulate communication between one tissue to another, absorb and form local reservoir for cellular growth factor, and has a significant role in the growth process, regeneration, migration, and cell interaction. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Komang Wayu Widya Santisatama with the last three digit of name is O8 and 6. I'm going to talk about the major component, their roles and function in the extracellular matrix or ECM. The extracellular matrix or ECM is a complex network composed of macromolecules organized in a cell or tissue specific manner. Components of ECM, as can be seen on the diagram, are 65% of water and 35% of biomolecule. Biomolecule can be divided into three groups, which are fibrous structural protein, water hydrated gel, and adhesive glycoprotein and receptor. First is fibrous structural protein. The main function are to contribute to tensile strength and recoil of the cell. There are collagen, elastin, and fibrillin. Collagen provides structural support to the ECM. Elastin responsible for extensibility and elasticity of the ECM. And fibrillin provides a platform for the elastin deposition in ECM. Specific structure, characteristic, and roles can be seen on table as presented. Okay, the second one is water hydrated gel. The main function are to contribute to compressive resistance and lubrication, also important in cell signaling process. The components are proteoglycans. Proteoglycans itself are attached to glycoaminoglycans via side chain. There are four types of glycoaminoglycan. First is, first is uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, which 
function in wound healing process. Second one is keratin sulfate, uh, sulfate involved in CNS development, chondroitin sulfate involved in strength of cartilage, and heparin sulfate involved in blood coagulation. Example of glycoaminoglycan and its function can be seen in our table as presented. Third is adhesive glycoprotein and receptor. The main function is to connect one element to another in the ACA. They are fibronectin, laminin, and integrin. Fibronectin. Fibronectin for the entire part of the HCM is going to uh, form focal addition. For the exterior part of the cell, it's going to transmit, transmit signal to the cell. Second one is laminin. The main function is to as a component of basal lamina where cell scan receptor can be attached. The third one is integrin, which acts as a molecular glue that connects HCM component. Specific function of each protein can be seen on table as presented. Uh, my name is Gregory Sulantong Ratama with three-digit last name 0A5. So I'm going to explain about the general definition, structure, and components of the extracellular matrix as an important biochemical part of a cell. So extracellular matrix interact with cell and tissue to maintain several things, which are cell fit, differentiation, sensation, and traction with extracellular environment, and homeostasis. For the cell fit, it can further relate it to several things. For the first one is the cell reservoir of growth factor, which in the process, the growth factor is modified to insoluble, unavailable, and not bioactive, but it will be ready if it is going to be used sometimes. Then, related to growth factor distributor, it could be seen in fibroblast growth factor that firmly binds to hyperosulfate chains of proteoglycans, which perform important roles in fibroblast transportation. Then, due to bind and tense against the substratum, the greens encounter additional chains that promote addition and proliferation. Other than that, stiff matrices that in the green clustering firm local additions to and mitogen activated protein kinase activation that cause increasing in proliferation. The transportation of the extracellular also play a key role in maintaining the cell or tissue proliferation, where extracellular matrix with high density of collagen fibers tend to cause lower cell motility resulting in increasing rate of cell proliferation. Unique biological properties in the extracellular matrix accomplish as bioactive fragments that released upon proteolysis maintain specific physiological and pathological processes, such as neogenesis, recon maturation, mutation development. For the second point, distinction based on the matrices rigidity. There is differentiation in cell growth, such as on the soft matrices, it can be found mesenchymal stem cells creation of neurogenic path. And on the stiff matrices, there is development of osteogenic path. And for biochemical properties of SAM, support cell sensation and interaction with extracellular environment using diverse signal transduction pathways. The chemical properties that is mentioned before is especially adhesive proteins such as fibronectin, endocrine, and non endocrine receptors as well as growth factors. This interaction via specific receptor causing vectoral cellular responses. And for the last point, extracellular matrix is the main component in directing homeostasis of tissue or cell by providing essential biochemical and biophysical signs that purpose to keep the cell or tissue in balanced state. Okay, let me introduce myself first. My name is Nima Indira Sariasari with three last digits of name uh, 084. So uh, right now I'm going to explain about extracellular matrix growth factor. So the extracellular matrix plays important roles in many normal and pathologic process, including important roles in development, in inflammatory states, and in spread of cancer cell. There are three kinds of growth factor of extracellular matrix that are involved in this process, such as vascular endothelial growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, and also transforming growth factor beta. The first one is vascular endothelial growth factor. So the vascular endothelial growth factor is a heparin binding glucoprotein. This growth factor, also known as vascular permeability factor, because of its function to increase vascular permeability. There are six classes of vascular endothelial growth factors, as written on the slide, and also there are three kinds of vascular endothelial growth factors receptors, such as VGFR1, VGFR2, and also VGFR3. This growth factor has two functions. First one is to stimulate endothelial survival, and the second one is to increase vascular permeability and hemodynamic effect activity. And the second growth factor is fibroblast growth factor. Fibroblast growth factor is an angiogenic factor that can make heparin complex. There are 28 types of uh, fibroblast growth factors. Um, 19 fibroblast growth factors found in pituitary gland, brain hypothalamus, eye, cartilage, bone, corpus luteum, kidneys, placenta, macrophage, and also in hepatome cells. This growth factor has functions in 
body homeostasis and also mediates the process of angiogenesis. So the third growth factor is transforming growth factor beta. This growth factor is a polypeptide protein that actively involves in growth process and cell differentiation. Transforming growth factor beta, also known as proper family bone or ligand and receptor, has an important role in stabilizing the structure of blood vessels. This kind of growth factor is found in tumor and normal cells, especially in kidney, kidneys, placenta, and also thrombosis. My name is Ibrudarmaida with three last digit number 083. The cause of cancer. Cancer is one of the most difficult and well known non communicable diseases in the world. This condition is caused by a genetic mutation that causes uncontrolled cell reproduction and cellular proliferation in healthy cells, sustaining proliferation signal, causing growth suppressors, resisting cell death, promoting replicative mortality, initiating angiogenesis, activating patient and metastasis are some of the distinct properties of the malignant cell. Carcinogenesis are substances that can induce carcinogen or cancer formation by physical, chemical, Biological process. Carcinogen can disturb the dynamic integrity of living organisms with metabolic change or interfere with physical cytology function of healthy cell. Carcinogen can be physical, chemical, and biological. Can introduce myself. My name is Gudi Aradi Paranajaya. The three last digit of name is 075. So I will explain about the biological carcinogen, physical carcinogen, and also chemical carcinogen. The biological carcinogen, such as, uh, including viral carcinogen, parasite carcinogen, and bacterial carcinogen. And the second, physical carcinogen, including electromagnetic radiation ionizing radiation, hard and soft material, and also the trauma. And the last is chemical carcinogen, which is including the reactive oxygen species that divided into free radical species or non, and also non-radical species. The sources of this reactive oxygen species is, uh, there are two, antigenous source and exogenous source. The antigenous source, including mitochondria, paroxysm, and also endoplasmic reticulum. And then the exogenous source is, such as air pollution, heavy transition metals, used oil, and burned food. And, then, and these are the table of free radical reactive oxygen species and also the non radical reactive oxygen species. As the slide showing, there are three highlighted species that commonly found in the can in cancer process. My name is Aurelia Tabina Pirianto with last three digit, three digit name 081. I will explain about the symptoms and stages of cancer. Next slide, please. So the symptoms may vary, but in general, there are pain and fatigue. For the cancer staging system, there is a system called the TNM staging system. Uh, in the TNM system, the T refers to the size and extent of the main tumor, the N refers to the number of nearby lymph nodes that have cancer, and the M refers to whether the cancer has metastasized. For the stages, there are five stages. The first one is stage zero, which means abnormal cells are present but have not spread to nearby tissue. For stage one, two, and three, the cancer is present. The higher the number, the larger the cancer tumor and the more it has spread into the nearby tissues. And the last stage is stage four, which means the cancer has spread into distant parts of the body. Now, the next topic will be presented by my colleague. My name is Vivian Sasuteja with the last three digit name is 080. I will explain about types of cancer. So there are several ways in which we can classify um, types of cancer. The first one is by origin cell types. We can classify it into three, carcinomas, sarcomas, leuke leukemias, or lymphomas. And then by nature, benign or malignant. And then by location, and here you can um, see a table where top 10 most common cancers found worldwide in 2018 by World Cancer Research and Fund and American Institute for, for Cancer Research. Okay, thank you for your time. My name is Aisha Tifatakia with three digits as NIM uh, 076. So here I'm going to discuss about the roles of exosome metrics in development of and progression of cancer. So the first one is particle arrangement and orientation of ECM accessory matrix constituents form a tissue-specific microenvironment that plays a critical role in tumor propagation. As the most significant ECM component, collagen dictates the primary functional properties of the matrix. Indeed, changes in the deposition of degeneration or collagen can lead to the loss of ECM homeostasis. As tumor cells proliferate, the surrounding ECM undergoes a significant architectural changes in a dynamic interplay between the microenvironment and resident cells. Increased depositions of metric proteins promote tumor propagation by interfering with cell cell additions, cell polarity, and ultimately amplifying growth factors in the um, So, the elevated LOX, lysyl oxide, activity has been clinically associated with increased collagen cross linking, fibrosis, and elevated risk or of cancer metastasis. Moreover, elevated LOX activity found on invasive edges of tumor has been known to drive actin polymerization, cell contractility, and migration, providing a pathways for successive tumor cells to follow. Like, like collagen and LOX, elevated levels of the glucosaminoglycan hyaluronic acid in the ECM 
correlated to increase like 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 likelihood of malignancy and poor prognosis. Accordingly, hyaluronic acid is frequently used as a biomarker for prostate and breast cancer. Augmented level of collagen and LRX directly promote ECM stiffness and mechanically drive cell mortality and proliferation. The exact role of hyaluronic acid in cancer metastasis remains unclear. However, its dysregulation can serve as a key biomarker for metastasis and cancer infections. Okay, I, uh, my name is Kudewa Inara Salimasi with three uh, last digit of name 074. HM as a potential therapeutic uh, for cancer treatment. HM as a direct therapeutic uh, target for cancer treatment. Uh, the first is therapy, a therapy targeting collagen. It is the main component of HIM. The breakdown of it can facilitate tumor migration and infection. Collagenase, uh, collagenase uh, treatment should be applied to first detect cancer uh, that are asymptomatic of infection and metastasis. The second is therapy targeting fibronectin. It mainly focuses on its application as a target for precise drug delivery. Uh, other HIM target is metric stiffness. Metric stiffness is a good therapeutic uh, target for cancer treatment because tumor cells grow well in the rigid HM. Uh, intratumoral HM can be antigen for tumor vaccine design and SAR therapy. SAR therapy softens the HM, inhibits gro uh, tumor growth, uh, and increases T cell infiltration in mice. However, cancer uh, vaccines and SAR therapies targeting HM components are very difficult to translate clinically. Compared to uh, Im immediately focusing on HIM components and signaling pathways uh, associated with small molecules, compounds, or antibodies. Uh, the third is development of technology for tumor diagnosis and imaging. The technology for tumor diagnosis and imaging can be referred as traditional imaging or modern tools, which can improve the effectiveness to diagnose uh, the tumor on in the midst of an extracellular matrix. Uh, the last is the role of HIM normalization as a powerful supplementary chemotherapy and immunotherapy. HIM normalization may vary heavily depending on its cellular sub substance or fragment that sustains the HIM itself. The first normalization of collagen as therapeutic target of HIM remodeling can be approached by various mechanisms. The second normalization can be reached by remote remodeling HIM with hyaluronic acid. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hideo Gadarung Sogupta with the last uh, three digit of name 072. So in this section, in the capture tree, we have two sections here. The first one is that the conclusion, and then the second one is that the advice. Uh, next page, please. So the first one is that the conclusion. In the conclusion of this study project, we have five points here. The first one is that the extracellular, extracellular matrix is a structural combination maintaining tissue structure, consists of fiber, ground substance, and basal membrane. The second point is that the cancer is a hereditary disorder that causes uncontrolled cell replication consisting of four stages or D3 of development. The third one is that the extracellular matrix is closely related to development of cancer cells by the various mechanisms of which is mainly produced by the hyperexcitability of the extracellular matrix. And then the third one is that all of those things, nevertheless, the extracellular matrix can also enable cell mature therapeutic agents to cure cancer development. And then the last point is that the development in research and technology also play a role in cancer therapeutic action. And then for the next section is that the advice for this study project. So we have two points here. The first one is that the advancement of technology should be developed to the some, to the some extent to cure and prevent the spread of cancer with its malignant effect to the extracellular matrix. The second is that the development of various therapeutic technologies such as radio imaging, liquid biopsy, etc., should be embarked. And for the time being, will be uh, taken by the moderator. Thank you. Okay, that's all uh, from our group. Thank you for the attention and home service.